your prayer has been answered. God wants you to hear something in that. You do not know what is in your personal prayer. Sometimes we think it's all about corporate prayer, but God is saying, hey, Zachariah, I'm going to work with the longing of you and your wife, Elizabeth, and that longing you have for a son, it's going to be joy to you, and it's going to be an answer to your nation. Today, I'm going to talk to you about being that woman who goes into hiding and nurtures her promise. And the text I'm going to be reading from is out of Luke chapter 1. I'm going to read the whole context. Sorry about that. It's going to be a lot of scripture, but I need you to know the whole story, starting with verse 5. I'm going to read out of the Passion trans Translation. During the reign of King Herod the Great over Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah who served in the temple as part of the priestly order of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also from a family of priests. So we've got two priests on both lineages right there being a direct descendant of Aaron. They were both lovers of God, living virtuously and following the commandments of the Lord fully, but they were childless since Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both quite old. One day, while Zechariah's priestly order was on duty and he was serving as priest, it happened by the casting of lots according to the custom of the priesthood that the honor fell upon Zechariah to enter into the holy place and burn incense before the Lord. A large crowd of worshipers had gathered to pray outside the temple at the hour when incense was being offered. All at once, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing just to the right of the altar of incense. Now, I need you to picture this. It was an incredible honor. Sometimes it never even happened for a priest. An incredible honor to be selected by lots to go in, not just into the holy place, but to the holy of holies place. And he is there in this place. And all of a sudden, an angel appears. Now, part of the reason why they set this whole up was they believed that if a couple was barren, then there had to be something out of order in their life. So despite what people might think, God had his eye on Elizabeth and Zechariah. Zechariah was startled and overwhelmed with fear, which would be understandable. But the angel reassured him saying, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God is showing grace to you. For I have come to tell you that your prayer for a child has been answered. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to name him John. His birth will bring much joy and gladness. Many will rejoice because of him. He will be one of the great ones in the sight of God. He will drink no wine or strong drink, but he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even while still in his mother's womb." Okay, I want to point out something. There is people out there praying. But what the angel says to Zechariah is, your prayer has been answered. God wants you to hear something in that. You do not know what is in your personal prayer. Sometimes we think it's all about corporate prayer. But God is saying, hey, Zechariah, I'm going to work with the longing of you and your wife, Elizabeth. And that longing you have for a son, it's going to be joy to you, and it's going to be an answer to your nation. And then he goes on to say, and he will persuade many in Israel to convert and turn back to the Lord their God, and he will go before the Lord as a forerunner with the same power and anointing as Elijah the prophet. He will be instrumental in turning the hearts of the father in tenderness back to their children, and the hearts of the disobedient back to the wisdom of their righteous fathers. And he will prepare a united people who are ready for the Lord's appearing. Okay, at this point, I would have fallen prostrate on my floor. I've got an angel after 300 years of silence. There was nothing between the book of Malachi and this account. But Zechariah doesn't do that. He begins to argue with an angel. I, I, I'm kind of trying to get my brain around it. Maybe he was just so afraid that things were just coming out of his mouth. But Zechariah asked the angel, how do you expect me to believe this? 
uh, because I'm an angel. I am an old man and my wife is too old to give me a child. What sign can you give me to prove this will happen? Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand beside God himself and he has sent me to you to announce this good news. It is quite possible right at that moment, Zechariah knew he was in trouble because when the angels were giving their name without being asked, that was saying something. Gabriel does not mean messenger. Gabriel means the might and the power of God. So Zechariah would have heard, I am the might and the power of God. And because you're not believing this good news, I'm telling you, now, since you did not believe my words, you will be stricken and silent and unable to speak until the day my words have been fulfilled at their appointed time and a child is born to you. That will be your sign. Meanwhile, the crowds outside kept expecting him to come out. They were amazed over Zachariah's delay, wondering what had happened inside the sanctuary. When he finally did come out, he tried to talk, but he couldn't speak a word. And they realized from his gestures that he had seen a vision while in the holy place. He remained mute as he finished his days of priestly ministry in the temple and then went back to his own home. Soon afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for the next five months. She said with joy, see how kind it is of God to gaze upon me and take away my disgrace because of my barrenness. Let's talk about this. I don't know how many years Zachariah and Elizabeth had longed for and waited for that child. And then I don't know how many years you can add to that where they had resigned themselves to, we will have no child. That promise will never happen. But when Elizabeth becomes pregnant, she doesn't go out in public. I would have been in the epicenter. I would have gone to the well. I would have said, I don't know if y'all are noticing what is going on right now. My husband can't talk and me pregnant. I'm pregnant. Don't you all feel bad about the way you talked about me? But Elizabeth didn't do that. Elizabeth actually means consecrated to God. She had a revelation that with this promised child, God was bringing to light her name. And she went into hiding. She said, I'm going to nurture that promise. I'm going to believe that God has something bigger for me. This isn't about me. This is about something so much larger. Elizabeth was a woman who knew how to consecrate herself, go into hiding and nurture the promise of God. That is why when the angel appears to Mary later, he has to tell her that her cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. I don't know what promise God has had on you, but I'm going to challenge you to consecrate yourself, get alone, listen to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Because here's what happened with Elizabeth. When she heard the sound of Mary's voice, that baby leapt within her, but it didn't stop there. Elizabeth was also filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it just takes some time to be alone, to be consecrated, to go into hiding, to be quiet in our noisy culture that says, what's wrong with you? and get the infilling of the Spirit. Consecrate yourself. Nurture that promise that God has on your life. Be that woman 